Hey, List community. In this video, I want to talk about the standalone module I have been developing over the past few weeks, which I call LISC RBAC. This standalone LISC module contains no additional dependencies and can be easily integrated by teams into their blockchain applications in order to enrich um, their capabilities with role-based access controls. So the trigger for me to make this submission was actually twofold. The first one was, of course, that I had this idea of yeah, tackling the authorization challenge in general with blockchain technology and how this would look like. But I would have never grabbed my keyboard and um, got to get into it, even if the hack on disk um, hackathon came around. And so I actually did that. And after now five weeks, I'm very proud to present you my first submission to the LISC ecosystem. Um, my submission is actually twofold. The first thing and the main thing, which I now call primary, is the LISC module itself. So it has a couple of transactions, actions, commands, and reducers, an HTTP API. And it also includes a small testing application, which allows the developers to quickly grasp of how to actually get this module integrated into their application. A secondary part of the submission is actually user front end. I'm not that person that's very good in building front ends, but I then read that that's an important part of the submission package. So that's what I did the last week. Um, you find it in the link as well here in the slide deck. But what was my primary motivation? So there's a common challenge, or authorization in itself is a common challenge that, that pro IT projects run into very early on in the development. With this module, I'm helping teams to actually get across this barrier and continue building what they actually want to build because they shouldn't spend too much brain time on domain knowledge that they don't know yet, and the module takes care of it. And also, while I was exploring this from an ideation perspective, but then also hands-on, I kind of found that the authorization challenge itself might even directly benefit from the technology of blockchain in general. But the other part of the motivation is that for me, it's important, or not just for me, for all of us, it's important that the Linux ecosystem is known to a wider audience. Um, and in order to achieve that, the LISC SDK needs to see accelerated ad adoption. And if I, or by providing use case agnostic building blocks like LISC RBAC, um, we can make sure that we reduce the barrier of entry for new development teams and the speed of development for new applications increases. This is a big driver of my motivation. And this all then, of course, results eventually into that the SDK becomes much more interesting for businesses which are, as you all know, the key drivers behind any technology adoption. So what's the team behind this RBAC? It's myself, Adrian, um, but first and foremost, also I need to mention the LISC community who had been uh, extremely helpful and with, uh, yeah, without the community, I couldn't have been uh, possible uh, to make this submission today. So I want to thank, th uh, I want to thank all of them um, today. Myself, I'm Adrian, I'm working in tech for nine years now. I've been exposed to various business problems, um, but yeah, this project now gave me the chance to actually get my hands dirty with stuff that I usually only talk about. So how does LISC RBAC actually work? The main feature it has, I think, is the has permission API to answer the question when a client asks, does user A have permission to perform an operation on a given resource. The module like takes these inputs and translates them into does there a policy exist which, which would grant any of the roles that user A has assigned the permission to perform operation A uh, B on operation as a resource C. And this returns just plain a Boolean, true or false. And then the application can go on and do what it what it wants with this place of information. Here we have a close look at the architecture of the module, very high level, of course. In the middle, you see the blockchain, um, the finalized blocks over time. Um, and at the top, you see the transactions that are coming with this module. And the key thing here is that you can add any of those transactions at any time in the blockchain's life. So the, the rule set for role-based access controls doesn't need to be known in advance. It can update over time, and it's all audited and in, um, embedded into the blockchain itself how this rule set changed over time. In the middle of the, um, of the picture, you see the on-chain running LISC RBAC solver. 
it's a small algorithm that takes um, all the transactions that are being submitted and um, compiles it into the rule set of its own. Of its own. Um, and it's built in a way that it can scale horizontally and can very fast uh, and quickly um, deliver responses to incoming requests. And those requests uh, you can see at the bottom are three different today supported ones. Um, I mean, it's also everything that the SDK in general supports. So it's an action. Um, it's of course um, an HTTP API and also the reducers because other modules need to make those hooks into other modules logic at runtime of the blockchain. So that's how it generally works. Um, and now I want to sit down and get my hands on the actual um, application and show you how it works in action. So now about the demo. What you see here is the LISC RBSD console. The first thing, of course, we need to do is to connect to our node. And now we can explore which default roles are there on a blockchain application, which includes the LISC module. It's these three roles, and we now want to add another role um, to the blockchain. So what we do is we go on the left to configure policies. But before we now can um, add anything, we need to, of course, sign in as a user who has sufficient permission to submit a new or to create a new role on the blockchain. Now that the submission was um, now that the transaction was submitted, um, we can go on and create a permission for that role. After we submitted this transaction, the blockchain now has a new role configured, the one of the NFT artist, and it holds one permission, as you can see here, NFT create. Let's now check if our user has um, or another user has the, um, the permissions required in order to create NFT assets. He, of course, has not. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, assign this user um, membership of that new role. We now can check and see that this user account here has now, in fact, the role of the NFT artist. So we can now check again and see that this user indeed has the permission to create NFT assets. But what about does he have permission to create roles? No, he does not. So we can now do two, do two things. We can either um, grant him a role or we can change the inheritance of an existing role to also include the permissions of, in this case, the RBAC admin role. We do this by going back here and updating an existing role. We now submitted the transaction that also the newly created role inherits all the permissions of the RBAC admin role. So when we go now to the roles tab and see, look at the NFT artist, we see it has four permissions. And when we open it, you can see has one direct permission, the NFT create permission, but it has also three inherited permissions from the RBSC admin role. So we now go and check if our user number four has the roles create permission. It now actually works. And that's all there is to it. Thank you and have fun with the module.